let's have a look at a couple more examples of using this cross-sectional area idea to calculate some volumes. Uh, so let's start by finding the volume of the shape that you get by rotating the region enclosed by y equals x squared and y equals 1 about the y-axis. So just to draw a picture of this region, y equals x squared, that's just our standard parabola here, and then y equals 1 is this horizontal line. And so the region that we're rotating is this region here. And we're rotating it around the y-axis. Now when we do that, if you, if you can picture it, what we get is sort of a parabolic cup shape like this. And it's, it's not empty inside, it's filled in inside. So this is what we're trying to find the volume of. Now, if you picture slicing this with vertical cross sections, like we did in previous examples, you get slices like this, right? They're sort of these parabolic shapes. And it's possible to find the area of these as a function of x. Remember, to calculate the volume, what we need to do is write this, the area of one of these cross sections as a function of x. And, you know, that would be possible to, fi to find this as a function of x, but it's going to be tricky at, at the very least. Um, so maybe there's a better way. So how else could we slice this, this shape? Well, if you imagine slicing this horizontally instead of vertically, what we get are cross sections that look like this. Right, and there's the cross section at the top. And these cross sections look pretty manageable. These cross sections are just circles. And the area of a circle is you know, a, a function of its radius in a way that's easy to write down. It's just pi r squared. So if we can... Uh, so if we can fi find the radius of one of these cross sections as a function of position, then we'll be able to write down the area. And once we have the area, then we can integrate it to find the volume. Um, so the area of one of these things is just going to be pi r squared. But since we're slicing this horizontally instead of vertically, uh, the radius is going to be a function of y instead of a function of x. So it's going to be, uh, I guess, pi and then r of y squared. And we need to figure out what, what this function r of y is. Uh, if we go back to our original graph here, right, it looks like this. And we're going from 0 to 1 in the y direction. Since we have, ev since we have a function of y here, this, uh, this equation that gives us our parabola curve, y equals x squared. Since we're writing things as functions of y, we should write this as a function of y. So take square root on both sides. You get x equals the square root of y. And I'm using the positive square root here because the radius of our circles, the radius, the radii of these circles is showing up as right, these positive quantities here. And so we want positive radii and not negative radii. And that's why I've chosen the positive square root here. Uh, so now that we have our radius written as a function of y, we can pop it into our area formula here. So pi times the radius squared. And the radius is the square root of y. So that squared. And so our area function is just pi times uh, the absolute value of y. But y is positive from 0 to 1, so this is just pi times y. So when we go to write down our volume integral, using cross sections, it's just the integral from 0 to 1 of the area function dy. But since we're dealing with circles, the area function is just pi times the radius function squared dy. And according to our uh, work up here, this is the integral from 0 to 1 of just pi times y dy. All right. As usual, actually writing down the integral that we want is the tricky part here. Once we actually have this integral written down, calculating the value of this integral is pretty straightforward. So we can move the pi outside of the integral, find an antiderivative for y, which is 1 half y squared. 
and then evaluate at 0 and 1. So pi over 2 times 1 squared minus 0 squared, and that's going to be just pi over 2. So the volume of this parabolic sort of cup shape is pi over 2 cubic units, whatever the unit is. Um, the general idea here of finding a volume by integrating uh, between two values, whatever they may be, um, pi times r squared, d something, whatever the independent variable is. We used y, but it could have been x if the shape were set up a little differently. So um, this idea of finding volumes by uh, slicing your shape up into uh, circular cross sections, uh, books often call this the disk method as if it ne needed a special name. It doesn't really. It's still the same cross-sectional idea um, that we were using in previous examples. Uh, but it's the special case where your cross-sections are circles. Um, the way that I have it written here, I've left this piece of the formula right here just as R, just to remind us that what we should put here is the radius of the disks. Um, what you'll see in other sources, often they'll sort of specialize this formula to the case where um, your to the case where you have the graph of a function like this, and you're rotating about the the corresponding coordinate axis, and in that case the radius is just the the radius at any particular x value is just sort of the height of the function. And in this special case, the radius is just f of x. Right. So this is the special case formula that you'll see in many sources. But uh, this sort of hides the fact that you're really just integrating the area of a circle. So I find it a, a little better and more flexible to uh, think of, of this so-called disk method as just integrating pi r squared, and then all you have to do is figure out what is the radius function that you're dealing with. All right, let's look at another kind of similar example. So this time, let's find the volume of the shape obtained by rotating uh, the region enclosed by these graphs, so y equals sine of x, y equals cosine of x, and x equals 0, about the, about the x-axis. To get a handle on this, we should probably draw a picture of what this looks like. So let's see sine of x looks like this, cosine of x looks like this, and of course x equals 0 is the y-axis. So the region we're rotating is this sort of slightly curvy wedge shape um, right here. And we're rotating this about the x-axis. So when we do that, the shape that we get is a little bit hard to draw. So there's this curved edge here, this point down here sort of traces out a circle like this. This curved edge sweeps out a curved edge up here, and then the top also makes kind of a circle shape like this. So it's it's something like this. It's, it's almost like a curved sided cone with a, a dimple pushed in the middle, I guess. Something like that. So how could we cut this, how could we slice this up into cross sections in a way that is uh, sort of easy to find the, air, the area of each cross-section. Uh, well, if you imagine slicing it horizontally, the cross-sections have pretty complicated shapes, so that seems like a pretty bad idea. But if you slice it vertically, things are not that bad. So if you look at a single x value, the uh, part of the region above that x value is this slice right here. And when we rotate that, we get Right, the top of the this slice makes a big circle, and then the bottom of the slice makes another circle. If we sort of turn this this region and look at it straight on, it's just a big circle on the outside with the circular hole punched in the middle. So to find the area of this, right, there are two radii. There's the outside radius. I'll call that R sub out for outside radius. And then there's the inside radius, which I guess I'll call R sub in. And the area of this shape, right, we want the region uh, in between the two circles. The area of this sort of thing is 
the radius of the big circle, which is pi times r out squared, minus the area of the hole that we're punching in the middle, which is pi times r in squared. If you want to, you can factor out the pi here. Might as well, I guess. So pi times r out squared minus r in squared. All right. So that means that the, this is the area of one cross section. So to get the entire volume of this, this uh, solid shape, all we need to do is integrate this area, area cross-sectional area function. So we're going to integrate um, from a to b, whatever those bounds should be, uh, pi times r out squared minus r in squared d. Well, d, whatever the independent variable is. In this case, uh, since we're slicing our, uh, our regions vertically, our independent variable is going to be x because there's one cross-section for every x value. So x is our independent variable. All we need to do is sort of fill in the, uh, fill in the bl blanks here. Um, but keep in mind that this formula, so you know, other sources like textbooks give this a special name as if it's something, some new idea, although it's not. We're just integrating a cross-sectional area. But uh, they often call this the washer method. Right. But this really isn't a new formula to remember. This is just the area of the big circle minus the area of the small circle. So we're just integrating a cross-sectional area to get a volume again. So same idea in a slightly different guise. Uh, so let's figure out what our bounds are. Now our bounds are x values because we're integrating with respect to x. So we need to figure out on this diagram what x values give us slices or cross-sections. So let me copy the region again, just so we can have a, a cleaner picture to work with. The x value that for, the x value furthest to the left that gives us a cross section is over here at zero. So that means we're going to integrate from starting at zero. And the cross section furthest to the right is where sine and cosine intersect. But that's at pi over four. Right? At pi over four, both sine and cosine give you square root of two over two. So the top bound here is pi over 4. OK, uh, so we have a pi times the outside radius. So the outside radius, that's the one that that's the big one. So for any particular x value in between here, the outside radius is this larger radius. And in this situation, that's cosine. So this is cosine squared x minus the inside radius squared. But in this situation, the inside radius is this, this lower function. And in this situation, that's sine. So sine of x, sorry, sine squared of x, dx. So this is the integral that we need to calculate to get the volume of this shape. So integral from 0 to pi over 4 of pi times cosine squared x minus sine squared x dx. Um, <clears throat> so to evaluate this integral, I guess we can start by moving the pi outside. Integral from pi 0 to pi over uh, 4. OK, so we have cosine squared x minus sine squared x. I hope this looks familiar from what you know about trigonometry. This is actually a part of a double angle formula for cosines. So this is cosine of 2x dx. All right, so that's a trigonometric identity that you hopefully are familiar with. Um, now that we have our integrand written this way, probably it occurs to you that, oh, hey, look, this is a perfect case to use a, trig to use a, a u substitution. So let's let u equal 2x, then du is 2dx, and 1 half du is equal to dx, and now we can do our substitution. So this is pi times the integral. Let's switch from x bounds to u bounds. So when x is 0, this substitution equation tells us that u is 0. And when x is pi over 4, u is twice that, which is pi over 2. OK. 
okay, and we're going to integrate cosine of 2x is equal to u, and dx is equal to 1 half du. All right, now we can move this 1 half outside of the integral, so we get pi over 2, and then an antiderivative for cosine of u is sine of u. We need to evaluate at 0 and pi over 2. So this is pi over 2 times sine of pi over 2 minus sine of 0. So pi over 2 times 1 minus 0. So that's pi over 2. So the volume of that funny, almost curvy cone shape with a dimple pushed in the middle is exactly pi over 2 units. Um, with this washer method formula, um, just like with the disk method, it's common for um, some sources, like textbooks especially, to write this as the integral from A to B of pi, and then uh, use the special case where you have a function, a function describing the top of your, the outside radius, and a function describing the inside radius and rotating about the x-axis, in which case the formula is f of x squared minus g of x squared dx. But again, just like with the disk method, uh, there's really no reason to remember this formula because it's a special case and it's actually less informative than the geometric idea of just writing the uh, difference of areas of the two circles. So I would recommend keeping the geometric version of this in mind instead of the special case where you're rotating about the x-axis.